how is generative AI making these attacks, these threats even more sophisticated? Because when we it's come to identity or posture or personas, uh, social engineering, uh, you know, they can really get super sophisticated. So what kind of impact are you seeing of generative AI on cloud security? Hi, this is Yohsa Pin Bhartia and welcome to TFR Let's Talk. Today we have with us Or Soshani, CEO and co-founder of Stream Security. Or it's great to have you on the show. Thank you very much for taking the time and thank you very much for the opportunity to discuss with you today. No, oh, it's my honor to have you here today and we are going to talk about cloud security in the kind of era of this whole AI boom that's going on there. Before we go there, I want to quickly talk a bit about uh, the company itself. Before this recording, we were talking and you mentioned that the company was created a couple of years ago in two, uh, 2022. Uh, security, depending on how you look at it, may be seen as a solved problem, but security is not a product, it's a process. You know, It's like cat and mouse game, bad guy versus good guy. Uh, bad guys have to be right only once. Good guys have to be right 101% time. So it, it's a bit challenging field. But in 2022, what kind of gaps you saw were still there that you felt, you know what, we have to create a stream security that led to co-founding this company. So talk a bit about the history and the story of the company. Before being up and starting a stream security, we have been working at uh, NVIDIA. And there uh, we were exposed to way hyperscalers of uh, building their private clouds and huge scale infrastructure. And we exposed how challenging it was for them to secure the environment and make sure that everything that they shift and everything they build and run in production are being secured. And we were exposed as well to which capability they build in-house in order to maintain those um, kind of city level data centers. And while building Spring, we have decided to kind of democratize those capabilities of the hyperscalers and bring it into you know, um, the private market, which means that it took Spring two years to build the core, which is the cloud twin, which is the digital representation of the cloud. And with such capability, we are able to help our customers and partners to better understand what is happening right now in the environment, whether it's a potential threat, potential misconfiguration, and to just you know, immediately understand when there is attack is starting, how it is building up, and eventually how to respond much better and faster to every threat or misconfiguration or exposure that happens in the cloud. And that's where we are right now, and that's why we have built Stream Security for. When I was listening to you, uh, another aspect of security is, of course, there may be companies who may focus on one aspect because, as you mentioned, it could be authentication. It could be identity management. Of course, we can talk about human errors, which is, of course, misconfiguration. Then uh, bugs are part of software development process, so bugs are also there. And then we can go into whole, you know, API security vulnerabilities, ransomware. I mean, the scope is so big. So when we look at stream security, are you looking at a specific area or you are looking at the holistic? What I want to understand is that when I look at stream security, what is specific, you know, problem or area when it comes to security because a big space is a big sphere you target? I will split my, my answer into two. First of all, Stream is focusing on the cloud layer, which is we are covering the identities, machines, networking. So we are not looking at what is ru currently running on the app level itself. So that's on one hand. On second hand, to a question, which is a great question though, when it comes into the cloud, we have to understand that everything is move, are moving very fast. So when there is an advisory, adversary, it can start through like stealing an identity or credentials from a developer, can hack in into the system quite fast, five minutes after implement configuration change by cloning a database, and three minutes after that, it can do the data exploitation. So there is, when attack occurs, it's developing and can go from A to Z in 20 minutes. So 
in order uh, to respond into the th to modern threats in the cloud, you have to take a broader look on the cloud itself, cross all of the end entities, cross all of the different dimensions in order to build the coherent and accurate story that will allow you to detect right away and to respond accordingly. That's why it's so essential to take the ISO um, isolated areas in the cloud security, as you mentioned, and kind of build it into one picture that they allow the SecOps, SOC, and DevOps to detect and respond. And when we look at public cloud, once again, within public cloud, we talk about multi-cloud. You may be running some workload on AWS, some on GCP, some on Azure, and identity management network, you know, that becomes a big challenge there because, you know, you have personas who have access to all those things. So once again, is your story a multi-cloud story or you're like, at this point, only one cloud? So right now we are, we are multi-cloud, companies and uh, multi cloud solution and as I mentioned you know for for to help our partners to comprehend with the challenges of today even you know with the the booming of the AI when you uh, when you utilize multiple clouds and each one of the clouds you can run different apps and different different use cases but there are dependencies bet between the clouds itself through identity through, you know, uh, when you're asking requests from BigQuery at the GCP, from Amazon, etc. So in order for you to understand the full story of and to secure everything, you have to understand um, the business and how the business is built throughout different cloud providers. That's why we have been focusing on running multiple clouds to, to help our customers to be more secure. What kind of threats are emerging when it comes to identity or network? From the research that we have been holding um, at Stream and by, I think, utilizing um, millions of workloads and millions of events or 10 million events throughout all of our uh, customers, we can say that most of the attacks and threats are starting through identity. Um, so most of the things that we have seen is, and the attacks and the adversaries starting from, from through the identity. Someone is trying to hack into the system and try to do some malicious things through the identity, through credentials that he, he was stealing. Um, so that's the first way in that we have seen uh, in the cloud in the last three years. So uh, now let's talk about you know. AI, um, AI has been around for decades. Uh, the new buzzword, or actually the transformative technology, is generative AI. Um, how is generative AI making these attacks, these threats, even more sophisticated? Because when we it's come to identity or posture or personas, uh, social engineering, uh, you know, they can really get super sophisticated. So, what kind of impact are you seeing of generative AI? on cloud security? So that's really a great, a good question. <laughs> so so the way I see it is, is like multiple layers. So first of all, it's taking all of the challenges that we have experienced today and doing that on, on steroids. For example, um, most of, you know, um, most of the AI uh, workloads, AI machines, like OpenAI, Redlock, and etc., you can run them in the cloud. So you are starting to utilize more heavily and rely more heavily on the cloud. It means that there are much more employees that are trying to reach out into the AI workloads as well. So you have to be much more robust on how you manage identities, how you manage permissions, how you manage configurations, because people are utilizing and using the cloud much more heavily. So everything we know by, by now is more amplified by utilizing that. Second one, because of the booming of the AI, um, the data scientists and, and AI scientists have been using a new way of doing implement CICD which is CICD for a generative AI capabilities, which is different from the standard software 
AI soft, uh, CICD software that all of us have been knowing for, for a decade. So it's different how to train machine and how to run that. So right now, we as an industry, we don't have in, even a way how to secure the new pipelines that, that we are building. And so that's another challenge that, you know, um, was ramping up quite fast based because of the AI. Um, and, the, and the third pillar of uh, when it comes uh, into the AI is by utilizing the generated code that the AI um, is giving us kind of for free. And then it, it opens up for many, much more vulnerabilities that can be integrated into the new generated code that all of us are being trying to utilize because we want to run fast, taking the generated code, integrate it into our software, but it exposing a lot of more vulnerabilities. So, so that's the three pillars that, that we have seen is um, running quite fast based on the, you know, the new booming of the AI. Can you talk about if there has been any incident where generative AI was used, leveraged to kind of launch an attack or you, you see that it is early age, just the way we are learning to use uh, generative AI for good things, bad actors are also still in the early phase or you are already seeing some attacks which are being, uh, which are using generative AI there? Um, so I think it open ha opens up and much more and new capabilities. And I think everyone is trying to learn what the generative AI is bringing into the table, both in terms for the attackers and second of all, for the defenders. So I think we are still, I think it's getting started where there is new type of attacks, but it's running right now under the radar because we also don't have the right tools or set of tools that will allow us to detect such of threats. So it's kind of a chicken or an egg problem. <laughs> so we don't have the, the detection capabilities that allow us to detect a new type of AI malicious attack. And right now I believe that there are multiple new attacks that may already gone uh, under the radar. How would you suggest organizations should approach you know, identity network security considering the threat that is emerging from Gen AI so that, of course, as we will talk about tools also later on, but tools are good only if they are in the right hands. So if the hands don't know how to use the tool, a tool is useless. So talk about the importance of practices, right procedure, right culture at companies so they are very well prepared for these kind of sophisticated attacks. As you mentioned, we are good as our solution and we are good as our culture. So, you know, it requires to do, to change, first of all, to change the way we look and think over security. And it also triggers much more broad um, thinking. And I think the first initiate state where I would recommend for everyone is, is thinking over security into more broad um, groups, within more broad groups. So I mean by that is that uh, empowering the DevOps, the IT, the developers, to think early on when they build, shift, deploy on security. Because I believe that eventually, in order to build um, a secure environment, you have to build internally a secured process. So by, and in most organizations where we have seen is that it in there is small security gr um, group that owns a lot of aspects within the company, whether it's IT environments, cloud environments, physical environments, and etc. So eventually, organizations that I have seen that are most secure is where the security is helping um, their, their colleagues to assume security ownership or democratize the security ownership within the different, um, within the different groups. 
And when there is a security mindset within the, you know, w- within everybody, that's where you are take you are becoming much more secure by design, and we allow you to utilize the security tools much better. Um, so I think that's where we should start by educating everyone to be more secure on the mindset, and with it, and it then it will re- um, reduce the friction between the teams and we allow everybody to work much better. So that's my advice for everybody. And where I've seen companies doing pretty well, they're shifting fast and, and also being able to be quite secure and utilizing, and the way they utilize the security tools are the best out of like the rest of the company. So that's my first um, advice to everybody before I telling everyone, hey, that's what you should do A, B, and C. Without the culture, it's just a for failure and waste of time for everyone. Now let's talk about tools. Uh, of course, we have been talking about Stream Secure, but let's just quickly talk about what kind of solutions you have. And also, when I was looking at your product offering, you know, it's like a, it's covering a, a wide range there. So just give us a quick overview of solutions. So we also know that, you know, yes, culture is needed, but we also give you tools so you can leverage them as well. So when it comes to the cloud, there are four main um, solutions out there that are are four main best practices where you can utilize them in order to build and run a secure environment. Um, First of all, it is the Synap, um, which, you know, covers do periodic scans into the environment and find identifications which misconfigurations and vulnerabilities, and you need a synap in order to build a long-term secure environment. Second of which, you have to utilize two more tools. First is, first is um, cl- um, configuration management that gives you alerts on configuration changes in real time. Second one is threat detection, which is doing analysis of the behavior of the cloud itself. And the third one is the SIM or the XDR, where you connect all of those solutions into one center that can help you with the correlation between those two in order to understand, in order to build potentially more sophisticated and to respond in, and to detect more sophisticated attacks. So that's like the main um, practices on how organization are building today environments. Or thank you so much for taking time out today and of course talk about uh, cloud security, talk about stream security. Thanks for all those great insights and I would love to have you back on the show because from what I see, you folks are doing a lot of work in this space and this space is evolving. So we need to talk at a regular basis so that our audience, your customers, they do know uh, how you folks can help them. But I really appreciate uh, talking to you today and I look forward to our next discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much for the time. It's been a pleasure from my side as well.